Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Thanks for tuning in. Did a follow-up test on the runout testing that I initiated a little while back. The first series of tests looked at, uh, you know, what what did, what is the effect, if at all, of runout on precision. And I did that test with um, a certain bullet that shot really good into the lands. So I loaded four thousandths into the lands and I thought, well, I wonder if being off the lands was any different. So I went ahead and um, grabbed the same rifle that I used for the test. It's the Bat Nouveau drop forward action, March scope, Brooks barrel, bat stock, Lobbio trigger set to about less than an ounce. And... Um, went ahead and started load development. I used the same charge that I used in the previous test, uh, 28.8 of N133, 2018. Seems to do really well, and this charge level is doing good for this rifle. Um, and then I seeded a thousandths off the lands, shot a three-shot group, and it was big. Four thousandths off the lands, big three-shot group. Seven thousandths, it starts tightening up. 10,000 starts tightening up, and then 11,000 um, gets a nice little circular group there. Um, so I went ahead and kept the 11,000 off the land um, load uh, for, the, for the testing. Okay, so we ended up, you know, like I mentioned, doing the load development, selling on 11,000 off. At that point, I didn't have much ammo left but I went ahead and shot another uh, five shot group at 11 thousandths off and didn't do too great. Mirage started kicking up pretty heavy so could have been a Mirage effect there I'm not sure but group did grow quite a bit. Um, the aggregate for both was around 0.2328 which right now I'm kind of getting ags in the low twos with this uh, particular barrel anyway. Um, and then I had 10 more bullets left and I created 6,000s run out with my Hornady tool here and uh, shot two five shot groups and group shape was very similar from this one to that one and that one had vertical, that one had some vertical um, also a little bit of horizontal in that one but anyway so um, nothing jumping out at me in terms of massive differences in the groups but um, I plan to shoot more I just wanted to do this video um, right now to show you what I think is um, very important to this testing. Um, right now, no definitive conclusions based on this sample size. I'm going to need to shoot more in order to have the statistical power to draw any inferences there with the data, but just wanted to do this video first to sort of um, show you what I think is going on here with all of this. Um, and it has to do with your chamber dimensions um, and I will go over that in a second. Let me go ahead and see the bullet first really fast because I'm going to use this to illustrate a point. A um, couple things, no primer, no powder. Okay, um, see the bullet. I'm going to see it at 11 thousandths um, like I did with the testing here. Okay, again no primer, no bullet. The chamber dimensions that I'm mentioning are free, is free bore. I think this is important. So the bullet goes into the chamber, settles there. This line here is where the brass, you know, would 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 stop. And then the free bore is the area where the bullet sort of enters into like the the bore. And then the lead is like kind of like a little funnel, um, kind of funnels you into um, into the bore. Okay. Um, and so the free bore is the area around the bullet in your chamber. There's two, two dimensions in there that are um, important. Um, one that's very relevant to this testing that I'll go over in a second. But the first one that's usually important is the length. How long of a free bore. And um, that is, you know, there's a few factors that determine that. But um, I usually choose a pretty long free bore. Um, I use 70 thousandths in my 6 PPC. Uh, that's pretty long. Most people usually run half or just a little over half of what I have. But I like it long because that enables me to get 
a lot more powder into the case. I typically at 100 yards will shoot uh, usually above 29.8, often 30.2. So I'm having to really fill up that case with N133 and so I need the space and so I, I have a long free bore to enable me to seat the bullet um, you know, out of the case. I'll, and anyway, that's my preference, but other people, well actually most, most of the other shooters I know don't have a free bore that long. The part of the freeboard that I think is the most relevant to this discussion is the freeboard diameter. You know, so what, what's the diameter of that freeboard? Um, mine is 0.2433, and that is what you call like a, a tight freeboard. Why is it called a tight freeboard? Because the bullet measures 0.243. So if you have, let's see, bullets that measure 243, which this one perfect is spot on at 243. Subtract that by your free bore diameter and you get 0 0.003. So three ten thousandths of an inch is the only clearance that you have. And technically the clearance is, you have to divide that by two um, because that's the clearance that is, you know, surrounding in a 360 degree uh, manner your bullet and that's point zero zero one five so um, so t if you go ahead and produce run out or you have naturally have you know high run out in your bullets but you have a tight free bore um, I mean just physically speaking you know your chamber is going to sort of if it's a tight free bore chamber it's gonna sort of correct some of that run out and so what I ended up doing was taking, you know, five rounds at the range and I pulled, they were already loaded bullets, but I'm at the range and range is hot. And I, I pulled my firing pin out just to be safe. Everything was pointed down range on target in case something happened, but no, nothing did. But I took, took five bullets. I created the run out. So I basically took my little Hornady tool with me to the range and let me kind of that's what I'll do now is create about six thousandths run out okay and uh, oh, looks like I gotta okay and let's see five six okay good okay so I created the run out and in those five bullets, then I, I chambered them. Throw that bullet in there. Took the firing pin out again. Be extra safe. And just chambered them. Pulled out the bullets. Okay, this is a drop port, so when the bullet, if there's a bullet still in there. It's not going to drop down the port, but anyway, um, and then what I did is I measured the run out at that point. about two and a half thousandths. Okay, so this went from six thousandths of run out down to about two and a half, okay? So what I think is going on is once that bullet goes into that tight free bore, it reduces the run out quite a bit. Okay, so yeah, about two and a half thousandths. And there's some evidence of this on the bullet itself. I don't know if you can see, but there's a scrape mark. Uh, hopefully you can. If you can't, um, I'll probably put some pictures in the video, but there's a notable scrape mark right there on the bullet, okay? Um, and I think that scrape mark is 
you know, the, you know, the bullet with run out kind of at an angle, scraping the free bore at that point. And the free bore now is sort of recentering the bullet. Um, and in this case, brought the, brought the um, run out down quite a bit. Okay, there's like, uh, there's this notable scrape. Now, here's an interesting thing too. I sort of thought, well, how, how wide is that scrape? You know, and so this is a really rough way of measuring it, but the scrape is about the size of the free bore. So I have a feeling that this is right at the area where, you know, the bullet is starting to enter that free bore area and the scrape begins, you know, right where it's entering the free bore area and then it, the scrape ends once the bullet is completely in the free bore. Okay. Um, so that's interesting that the scrape uh, size is just about the same size as the as the free bore length. So anyway, um, all that to say that it seems like what's going on here is that in a tight free bore situation, even if you have quite a bit of run out, once that bullet gets chambered, the run out is going to be reduced um, in a tight free bore situation. I mean, there's just no way physically possible that the bullet can stay with that much run out and, and go, um, you know, into the free bore. So like I said, there's a nice scrape mark on that bullet where I believe it's contacting the free bore and starting the process of recentering it. Um, anyway, so just wanted to put that video out for now. Um, just to let you know what I think is going on. Uh, I will continue this test though, uh, to see, uh, if nothing else, it'll just be, it won't necessarily be a test of run out because like I said, if I'm chambering these things and it's reducing the run out, then it's not really a run out test. It's probably more a test of, um, you know, scraping and then reproducing a low run out situation. Is that better or worse? So, um, anyway, yeah, so we'll just continue to test. We'll fire several more five shot groups. We'll run the data and the stats, see what's going on, see what kind of conclusions we can come up with here. But it seems like initially that, um, you know, if you have a tight free bore, well, you're, it's naturally going to correct some of that run out. Um, this one corrected, you know, uh, four, about four thousandths of the run out, three and a half, four thousandths of the run out. So. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, please check out my Patreon and uh, please look forward to my next video on this topic. Thank you.